villager breeding has changed in Minecraft 1.16. Hey guys, Deathtiller here, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. So, breeding of villagers has changed in 1.16. So, the breeders we've all been using, the Impulse SV design, which is over here, no longer work. Well, it's not that they no longer work, they're just very unreliable. So, I've came up with a new concept of a villager breeder, which I'm actually releasing. Well, I'm doing it in my video tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe to see that stuff. But yeah, let's get into the explanation behind this villager breeding concept. And yeah, this should be fun. There is timestamps down below if you guys want to just go straight to the tutorial. So as I've said, this breeder here doesn't work anymore, which is unfortunate because it was such a nice compact design. But yeah, 1.16 came along and messed that up completely. Now I discovered this in the Autocraft series. I was trying to breed some villagers and I couldn't get any new ones. So yeah, I thought it was just like a, a temporary bug, but no, this is just one of the new features. So, what is actually wrong with this breeding setup and how do we make a breeder that works functionally? So, in Minecraft 1.14 and 1.15, villager breeding was a fairly simple process. All you needed was some accessible beds that the villagers could sleep in, along with a source of food. And then, those villagers would breed until the beds were all occupied. However, and 1.16, that is no longer the case. The beds don't need to be directly accessible. The villagers still need to be able to pathfind towards them in order to breed, but they don't need to sleep every night like the old setup did. Another change is with the way the villagers handle food. So why don't I demonstrate this? So let's get some carrots, because these are this is the food source I like to use the most. And what we're going to do is we're going to get six stacks worth. That's a decent number. That's the number I normally use. So, what used to happen is no matter the, the space the villagers were in, so if it was a 2x2 two two or a 1x1 one one, like it is here, as soon as the villagers throw food, the other one would pick it up. Obviously, if the villager already had stuff in its inventory, that could impact this process. But yeah, now what happens is in order for a breeding, well, breeding to happen, the villagers have a little bit of a food fight. So, let's give them those and see what happens. As you can see, the food's been thrown to one. That one will pick up. And then, if everything goes well, that may not work because I don't have any beds, the other villager should throw the stuff back. But as you can see, the items spend a lot of time just lying on the ground before they're picked up. And with the old setup, they would fall through the fence area and they'd go down into your system, which isn't nice. Uh, let's see if we can place maybe some beds here. That might speed up the process, possibly. No, it's, it's not doing it. So yeah, <laughs> the food spending a lot of time on the ground has a major impact on the farm. As you can see, they are now breeding, which is a great thing. I never actually saw the other guy throw food back. He should have, but he didn't, which is annoying. <laughs> So yeah, we needed to come up with a system that would allow the villagers to breed because they couldn't do it in the one by one space because they couldn't throw food at each other along with, you know, handling the baby villagers because they also, they stopped ejecting back into the central chamber. Let's just say that. The, the way the villagers deal with beds overall has changed. So why don't we look at a system that would handle these new restrictions? So we're going to run a little bit of a test here, just to prove my next point. So, uh, let's just block off this path so the villagers can't get out. So let's start with two villagers. Now, normally these guys would just walk around and they won't really care about the beds. The only time they'll care about the beds is at night time when they try to sleep. However, baby villagers on the other hand, they like to go and jump in beds. It's part of their, like, their, their overall AI. They won't immediately path in towards it, but they will do it within, say, five minutes of them spawning. So we're going to use this mechanic in order to funnel the villagers, the baby villagers, out of the breeding cell. So what we're going to do is we're just going to spawn a baby villager directly and we'll see what happens. So this guy should eventually run towards these beds and you know start jumping on it. He'll, he'll pathfind towards it. Now in order to, for a pathfinding attempt to be successful for the baby villager, the two blocks, so this block and this block above the beds need to be air blocks or else the baby villager won't move towards that. And look at that, there you go. It just moved towards and started jumping on the bed. 
So yeah, we have a way to attract these guys. Alternatively, you could use, well, you could you used to be able to use a zombie pigment to scare villagers away from you. Or, you know, a zombie it would probably work as well. But this system is far more easy to set up. So, we have a way to feed the villagers without losing those items. We have a way to get the baby villagers out of the way. So why don't we merge these systems together, come up with something nice and compact that would work as a villager breeder. So here's the concept I came up with. I needed to fit this in a 5x5 space because of the way I built my base on the Autocraft server. I designed this farm for that area in particular. So that's why it's all nice and compact. So we've actually got two breeders here, which is fairly nice. So let me break it down. So here we've got a 3x1 holding cell for the villagers and this will give them more than enough space to throw food at each other and hopefully not lose any. There is a chance that it will, food will still fall down the shaft here but if that happens you can always empty out of the other villagers inventories later on. So that's the breeding cell. Here we've got the beds that are on the opposite side of a wall. Now these villagers can pathfind towards these beds when it's night time and things like that but they can't sleep in them, they, they physically can't reach the beds because we don't need to reach the beds anymore for breeding to take place, which is very nice. What happens is the baby villager will spawn, and after a certain amount of time, you saw how long it took over there with our testing, they will detect these beds, even here. So what we'll do is we'll spawn the baby villager, and we'll see what happens. So after a given amount of time, it will pathfind towards the beds, and it will fall down this drop chute here. Now you can set up a water system to take the baby villagers elsewhere. I'll look at that, there you go. It just fell through and it pathfind towards that. Yeah, you can set up your own water system. I didn't feel the need to do that. If you want, I can do another tutorial on handling villagers and water streams and just moving them about the map because moving villagers around is annoying. So yeah, that is all there is to it. So all you need is a small holding cell, some beds that are not accessible to the adult villagers, but the baby villagers think they are, along with a way to get them out of the way. Now this thing is fairly simple, but I will still give a block by block tutorial. So let's get into it. So since we're doing the double breeder setup, which is what I highly recommend, I'll explain that in the next segment. You can go to the timestamps down below if you want to see that stuff. We're gonna start with a five by five area. Now to start off with this thing, you're gonna build a wall two blocks tall all around this thing like so and then we're going to build a wall in the middle there we go we're going to place two blocks and then remove these blocks on both sides like so take a look at it pause the video if you need to and now what we're going to do is we're going to place our trap doors so we're going to get rid of this block because that block has the drop shoot we're going to place a trap door open it and then place another one to stop the adult villagers from getting through. So once again, place the trap door, open it and then place another one to stop the adults from getting through. Next what we're going to do is you've got to place a block here, remove these blocks just so that the villagers can actually see the beds, place another block like so and then place some more blocks down here so that we can place the bed. Then what you need is you want to place four beds. This will make it so that the villagers can continue breeding because even though the baby villager will get out of the way, when it's standing up here, it will take up one of the beds. So if you only have three, no more breeding can take place. So having an additional one is nice. It's not necessary, but it does help. So let's go and build the exact same thing on the opposite side. So one block down, remove those two blocks, a block over like so, and then blocks to place the beds. Then what you do is you place the beds like so and there you have it. Now the orientation of the beds, I'm not sure if it has an effect but I'd recommend just doing it this way. Also bear in mind the two blocks above the bed like so need to be clear so that the baby villager can path them towards. Next what you want to do is you want to get your villagers in here. Now you can do this via boats, minecarts or just by pushing them, that is very annoying. But you want two villagers in each cell. You can experiment with compactor setups, but you will encounter problems with pathfinding if you do that. So I do recommend working with this setup. And there you go, that is the breeder ready to go. All you need to do now is throw items, but now you can do this by a watch stream or by doing it manually. I prefer to do it manually because I have more control over the villagers that way. And yeah, that's this thing done. 
all you'd want to do is, as I said earlier, do some drop shoots down into water streams to take the villagers off to a central holding area and then you can do whatever you want with them. So, as you can probably tell already, this farm requires some player input. Now, there are lots of farms that, you know, have um, actual farms attached to them so that the whole process is automatic. But that requires some additional work and I wanted this set up to be able I wanted you to be able to build this thing in under five minutes. And I think this thing is perfectly achievable in that period of time. So the fact that it's not fully automatic means that obviously you need to get the food to the villagers in one form or another. Personally, I enjoy throwing the food at them. And then I like to sit and watch them so that the whole, I can make sure the whole thing's working. And I have a lot more control. And I know for a fact that if I throw six stacks of carrots at them, that will do them for like a few hours worth of breeding which is a nice round number. But yeah, if you want to, you know, automate this entire setup, all you need is you need a villager powered, like, carrot farm or something, and then just drop the items into a water stream and then snake them around here, and you can have this setup fully automatic. You will need to do some tweaking and things, maybe, like, not use full blocks here, maybe some soul sand or something, that would be very strange, in order to get this thing to work. But yeah, having control over these guys via doing this stuff manually is the best method for me. And it's the best method for you. So I'd recommend doing this. If you are curious about the fully automatic version, why don't you let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can come up with a farm design. So there we have it. There is the farm all done. Now, I didn't do all of this by myself. There was a few members of the Minecraft community that had done some research and some experimentation before me. So, first of all, we have Fizeri. I hope I pronounced that name properly. You can see a, a video on screen, well, it's a thumbnail of his video, where he showed off the baby villagers jumping on beds mechanic and how that can be used for a villager breeding setup. There's a link to his video down below. Make sure you go and watch that if you're curious about that mechanic. Also, we have someone from the SciCraft Discord by the name of Invisible Spider. He came up with the hidden bed setup that we are using right here. Now I took the concepts from both of those guys, merged them together and you know compacted the whole thing so that it is more user friendly. So yeah that's it for this tutorial. If you found this useful, if you've been looking for a 1.16 Village Breeder for a while, if you've been trying to fix your Breeder for a while and this video has helped you, why don't you subscribe and let me know how you thought of the tutorial and the overall structure of the video in the comment section down below. And while you're here why don't you go and watch the Autocraft server? That is a server where we try to automate everything in Minecraft along with having some fun along the way. I will leave a link to that playlist in the description as well. I'd like to thank you all for watching this episode of the Autocraft so far. Make sure you go and watch everyone else on the server. On the left hand screen right now, there are two videos. One that YouTube wants you to watch and one that I think you should watch. Make sure you go and watch them and remember to leave a like, subscribe and hopefully you will enjoy the videos.